Now, John, home renovations, okay, and insurance, how does that all work? How expensive is that? Is it worth it? Is it not? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So it's one of those things that it uh, depends uh, on the particular instance. You know, some people are doing extensive renovations. Some people are maybe just remodeling a single room, doing some cosmetic updates. But I think it's a really timely topic because uh, I pulled some interesting statistics. And this comes from the um, National Association of Insurance Agents. Mm -hmm. And they said that due to stay at home orders, 64% of American homeowners completed some sort of home improvement project this year. Wow. That's over 50. That's more than half of homeowners did something this year. And it makes sense. We, we've had nothing else to do for six months now. What does that mean for your home insurance? Well, the first thing that I will say that I think is super important to, to always uh, mention when it comes to home improvement projects is permits, permits, permits. I know it's not something that people want to think of. It's an yeah. added step. It can delay the process. It can be cumbersome. But talking to your local building inspector and the town building department is super important. Whether you're tackling a project yourself or hiring a contractor, definitely don't skip the permit. Um, even minor projects might require them. So suppose you, you know, complete the project and the city inspector eventually catches wind it was done without a permit. If it's not up to code, they can order you to tear it down and start over. Yeah. And so if, and if that's the case, you know, don't expect your home insurance to foot the bill for any sort of redo. A homeowner's policy is going to include a coverage called ordinance or law. Um, and ordinance or law is a coverage for code upgrades, basically. Your standard home insurance policy, there's a separate coverage for this. It's usually a much lower coverage and it uh, will pay for bringing things up to code. But if you've done an extensive project and it wasn't done up to code, and then suppose you have some damage to that, portion of your property that wasn't done. Maybe it's a finished basement or something that you just kind of bootlegged yourself hmm. and there's damage to it. The insurance company might not pay for it because they're going to say, well, that falls under your ordinance or law. You only have $10,000 of coverage for it. And you're, you're, you're going to be footing that bill yourself like the insulation's not done properly or the electrical is not installed up to code. Those portions of the project aren't gonna be covered by insurance unless you have the right amount of ordinance or law coverage. And if they found out that you did it yourself, didn't hire a contractor, didn't pull the permit, you might be SOL looking for that coverage. So another thing that I always say is a good idea is to notify your homeowner's insurance company. Um, so your home insurance covers the cost to rebuild your home if uh, there's a disaster like a fire or windstorm. So, uh, while a home renovation project is a good way to increase the value of your home, it could also increase the cost to rebuild your home. So if you're adding on a sunroom or you're adding on, you know, a, a three season room or even a, you know, a dormer on your cape or something like that, and you're adding square footage to your home, yep. tell your insurance company because that home is going to now cost more to rebuild. It's got more square footage. You're adding 500 square feet to your home, you're going to want to make sure that if five years from now your house burns down, you're getting paid for the full home, not just what you had for a home five years ago. If you're doing a renovation and it's going to be extensive and you might not be living at your home for more than 30 or 60 consecutive days, great idea to touch base with your home insurance company and let them know that so that they can look into your policy and see what the specific vacancy exclusion is. Okay. And if there's going to be an exclusion that's going to make it difficult for you, they'll look into a vacant policy for you. So uh, you can do a vacant homeowner's policy for three months, six months, nine months. It doesn't have to be a full year. And it's going to be putting you in a position to make sure that you have the proper coverage if something were to happen to your home while it's vacant and under renovations.